All right, we welcome back Totally Gym Radio, and for all the people in the Philadelphia area that are preparing for Snowmageddon, you're not getting your cold cuts because the supermarkets are insane. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I walked in the supermarket after work, and I went in to go. I got a couple six-packs, and I went put them in my car, and I was going to come back in, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. There wasn't even any shopping carts available. That's when you know oh, there's a problem. People are like, like it's the end of the world. Anyway. That's when, All right, that's when you order five pizzas and freeze three of them. Dude, you know what? Exactly. Exactly. That's <laughs> what I'm going to do. I'm just hoping the pizza places are open. So, all right, but it's time for our next guest. She's happy. She's excited. She actually sounded kind of giddy, too. I'm excited. I know damn right well Nick's excited. And here she is, our new friend, the one, the only, Miss Caitlin Black. Hello, Caitlin. What? Hello. Wow, what an intro. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's where it's uh, let's Let's get it a little. It's, you're going to be like, uh oh. So, I actually had a nightmare of you the other night. Oh, goodness. <laughs> like West, Cra- West Craven style? Like, what's happening? Tell me. No, th- actually, this right now, because I didn't know. Th- this is. I, I didn't know who the hell you were. And I apologize. Like, I had no, no idea. Hey, and what that's, I- a, that's totally okay. A lot of people <laughs> don't know who the hell I am. And that allows me to do my own grocery shopping. And I'm kind of okay with that. That hey, that that is definitely a good fringe benefit. Yeah. So, so what I do is like once a month I'll turn around to my co host Nick and my other guys and I'll turn around to Facebook fans and say, Hey, who do you just want to hear on the show to get some input and some things? And Nick who is he is definitely the king of television. Like he knows every show that's on, he knows the ins and outs of television. He is a mm-hmm. T V aholic. He sends me his hey. little list every month, and you were on the list this month. So I was like, oh, right. and Nick. So now, there you go. She was on the list every month for the past, like, nine months. Was she? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, then, well then, then Caitlin never answered any of my tweets until this past month. So how about that? <laughs> oh, no. I highly doubt that, sir, but I am a little technologically impaired, so that's a possibility. <laughs> so there you go. That's the story how you're here and in my nightmare because I was I was uh in complete panic mode like uh, what, what are we going to talk about what, what's this what what's am I that? Gonna talk about with this girl I don't know who the hell she is. Yeah. Like I yeah. get in a panic mode like that. Like usually I get nervous when I'm talking to people who I like, grew up like watching or listening to or whoever but I always end up like once it comes on, I'm like, all right, I'm cool. But now, like with you, I'm this. I, I'll be cool, but deep down, it's like I'm a bundle of nerves. Oh well, hey, you know, I I've had a lot of green tea, so I'm right there with you. You know, we'll just nice. we'll get through this together, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I heard you said you were in Pittsburgh and you're hunkering down. I am um, from Ohio, A.K. Rowdy Akron. So um, I think we're they're going to miss it, but I, I, I do hope the uh, Eastern Seaboard uh, makes it out okay. Well, actually, I'm in Philly. Oh, you're Philly. Sorry. Philly. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, we're going to get it. <laughs> we're getting yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Uh, yeah, it, it. You know, it's kind of, like, ridiculous, though. Like, they act like it's never snowed before. And right, it, it's right. The media, like, I was talking to uh, somebody today, and I was saying, you know, here's what's going to happen now. Once them flakes start tomorrow, we're going to have mm-hmm. 24-7 snow coverage until it stops. Oh, yeah, it's, it's snow again or whatever. It, but that I feel like that's kind of the media these days. We've kind of turned to this, like, you know, salacious coverage that's, you know, everything's intense. These car chases, where are the Kardashians vacationing? What snow is going to hit? Like, oh, my God. And, you know, it's like, well, there's there's a lot of other things that we could maybe be reporting about. but <laughs> You would think, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, you know. Uh, but at the same time, I say it's better to be super prepared, over prepared, and, uh, you know, hunker down with your, with your meats and your pizzas 
and your beers and, I don't know, Netflix and chill yourself until the snow stops. There you go. That sounds perfect. Yeah. That's my advice. Now, you, you, you said you're from Ohio. Do you still call Ohio home now or – no, probably not. I've been in, I've been in Los Angeles for um gosh, almost 9 years now. So Okay. Um, you know, and I was actually born in Los Angeles. Uh but oh. we moved to Ohio where my mom is from. Um she grew up in Middleburg Heights in Parma and um moved back there when my dad was going through residency for um he he's now an OBGYN, so he delivers babies. But uh oh, wow. I was about two and a half when we moved back. Huh. So, but I love it. I love going back. I I thoroughly um, enjoyed my childhood and um, my high school and college years and all the seasons and all the best doors. So I I do love coming back uh, and then quickly leaving after it snows too much. <laughs> Has it become the place now that like it's great to visit, but you want to get back to the city? You know, sometimes I really love being home. I love being home during the summer and just praying for, like, massive thunderstorms because I miss them so much. Um, And I love being there in the fall. The winter I can, you know, take it for a little while and then I'm out. But it's just it's so nice to kind of, like, slow down a little bit and breathe in in non-smog air and, uh, (laughs) you know, just kind of chill out with my friends and my family and, you know. Not have right. to deal with the four or five. So <laughs> now, how did you get like? Uh, how did the this girl from Ohio become an actress and out there in L.A.? Well, actually, my parents met at school. They met at Stevens College in Missouri, Missouri, and um, they both went in for acting. And my dad went on to pursue his master's. My mom later got her master's. They both moved to L.A. Um, long story short, my dad didn't do very well. My mom had um, some pretty good success out here, and um, so I had very supportive parents from the beginning, but a lot of it stemmed from my grandma owned a dance studio in Cleveland um, for our over 50 years, and I started dancing, which led me to musical theater, which led me to acting. Hmm. Now... Um, as you were growing up doing this, was the plan in the back of your head all along to move out to the West Coast? or No, no, not really. I really wanted to do musicals. I wanted to move to New York. I lived, um, you know, we lived in Ohio, but we traveled to New York a lot. I loved going to the theater. But um, at 19, I slipped and herniated a disc in my back and then um, rehabbed. And then at 22, I did it again and they did an MRI, and they're like, your your discs are degenerating, and your back looks like it's 50 years old. So dancing, wow. um, I had to stop. And, um, you know, that just made me kind of move even further towards acting. I've danced a little bit since then, but, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not able to sign a two-year contract to do eight shows a week, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it, was a, it was a hard blow. And I moved to New York after after college and tried to just pursue straight theater, non musical theater. Um, okay. And I I ended up getting a web series out there before anybody knew what the hell a web series was. Um, and that we aired that in 2006, and it was called Floaters about these three girls that are living in New York trying to figure out what they're going to do with their lives, and they're working at a temp agency, basically. Um, and, you know, that just, I really enjoyed it. I loved it. And I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to go for. And after I finished that, I moved straight to California and hunkered down and um, did my best to to get some work out here. <laughs> wow. Now, yeah. and, and the stories like that always amaze me because now did you move to New York and then out to, to California by yourself? Or did you have some a friend along with the journey I with you? or? I moved to New York by myself, um, wow. but, you know, living in Ohio, my parents were not very far, and man, of course, did they visit all the time, um, and I had some friends that were there from college, so I wasn't, like, you know, alone wandering the streets of, you know, Spanish Harlem right. by myself, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then I ended up um, 
you know, meeting a guy, and we were dating in New York, and then we actually traveled cross-country together to California. That relationship didn't work out, um, but he got my stuff here, so that worked for me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but, you know, I've always kind of been like that. I I'm, I wouldn't say, like, I'm a, a hermit or I'm, I'm a homebody, but I'm definitely okay, like, being alone and, like, doing it alone. I think that actually, I think some of the best work that I've done or the most driven I've been is when I've been single um, because that's that's all you focus on, you know. It's like that's, right. you know, that's your that's your meal ticket, that's your happy ticket, that's everything. Yeah. Huh. yeah, like yeah. if I had to do that, like I would be petrified. I, I would, I would just completely <laughs> wimp out and not do it. No, I don't know. I don't know. You'd be surprised. You know, you're like there were definitely like some sleepless, you know, crying nights. Of course, I mean that that happens. You're like, oh, did I make the right decision? What am I doing? There's a million other people out here that are trying to do the same thing as me, and. You know what makes me special, and um, but you know you just. Uh, I think our industry has changed a little bit, and what I consider a craft, and what I went to school for, and what I've trained for, um, I think reality television has skewed a lot, and so there's a lot more people out here, and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat, all these people that have become famous for just being famous for no reason, right. and. Um, you know, there's no there's no background. I mean, I got my 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 background in theater and dance. You know, doing eight hour rehearsals and then doing a two and a half hour performance at night. That's love. That's like this is this is my air, my 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 bread. Um, so uh, it's a, it's a little disheartening now. I feel like the industry has definitely changed, and um, unfortunately, I think a lot of producers and casting directors are looking at how many followers you have versus right. um, are you talented enough to do this job? Um, but how many people can we bring to the box office or, you know, subscribe to this? And um, I'm I'm lucky I came out here when I did, and I have a little bit of an establishment, but it's still really, really difficult. And sure. um, I'm not the type of person that wants to exploit my personal life for my professional life because those are two different things for me. Right. Do you think they're they're looking at uh, the actual social media aspect now on, uh, like you said, like how many followers or uh, do you think they're looking at that first before they even look at anything else, like your resume or anything? Well, no, I mean, maybe not in my case because at least I have a series regular on my resume. I was on a show for four years. I have a lot of guest star and co-star credits. So a lot of casting directors know who I am. Um, you know, because I've made the rounds. I've been here for nine years. Uh, sure. Uh, but I think people coming in right now are um, are probably at a disadvantage because they're not known. They don't have a name. So even agencies that are, you know, interviewing them are probably looking like, what kind of followers do you have? You know, are you political? Are you comedic? Are you, you know, do you take a lot of photos? All of that stuff. And, um I think social media has done wonderful things um, for the world, don't get me wrong, but I, I think it's taking away some of the beauty and the art that was supposed to be in this business, and so has reality television, you know. We were totally. supposed to be oh, watching totally. television and, and movies to escape from our lives, you know, to, to cry, to laugh, whatever, and now we're being bombarded with lives that are so much, so elaborate and Amazing, and those aren't realistic either. But they're, you know, they're pegged as reality television, and you too can live this life of the rich and famous. <laughs> right. So, now, it's, a, it's a little bothersome. Now, do you watch any reality TV, or are you just totally turned off to it? Um, you know, I like to watch The Amazing Race because I like to get ideas of where I want to go on vacation. Um, <laughs> I think that. I think it's a cool, like, educational show, you know? Like, yeah, of course, they over-dramatize it and what have you, but you learn, you can learn a lot of, about the world and different countries and different cultures through it. So I think that's very interesting, and I used to love to watch Top Chef because I'm, I love to eat everything in front of me. So um, that, was, that was a big one. But other than that, you know, I, 
try I try not to feed into it. I mean, I'm sure I could get hooked too. It's easy. But um they're they're taking jobs away from actual scripted television. So I try and right. try and remove myself from it. Now, you mentioned that that you early on that you were on before nobody really even knew what they were was a web series. And I think yeah. more and more that's going to end up being more of the future. I mean, there's hundreds of stations out there, but I think more web series are really going to come to the forefront. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they are definitely on the rise, and it's a good way nowadays to, like, if you're a writer or if you're a director or even if you're an actor or actress, you know, that's a good way to, like, start giving yourself momentum, you know, even if it's done on a low budget and – but it's something like you're able to kind of give yourself your own reel nowadays by doing that, and you're not just like sitting with your mom in your basement rehearsing lines and somebody's taping you. You know, you're able to kind of do this full scale production um, and market it to people. And I think that's great. Um, I, I think, you know, at, there comes a point where that will probably end up dying out too a little bit. You know, we just, it's, it's ebbs and flows, and right now that's really on the rise. I mean, we didn't know how to market ourselves um, at all in 2006, and we even won an Emmy. Um, wow. We won an Emmy. We went to Sundance. Um, we were like, yeah, we're the next big thing, and everyone's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, nobody knew, nobody knew how to get money or advertising, basically. You know, when we... Right. When, our producers were trying to look for um, advertisements and advertising agencies to, you know, come in. And they're like, well, what are we going to do with this? And they're like, well, we don't really know either. So, um, yeah, so we were we, we were kind of on the, on the flagship and we fizzled out. But it was great for me. I had some stuff to move out to L.A. with, which, you know, was extremely beneficial. That's awesome. You, you, you yeah. were... Uh... You were like a forefather of web series. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm sure there's, there, there's plenty of other people that were doing the stuff at the same time. Um, but, yeah, we were we were actually in the New York Times uh, magazine um, because everyone was like, what is this? What are you doing? And we're like, I don't know. I just show up on 20, you know, 23rd Street and 5th Avenue to this tiny little office building and we shoot in a tiny little space and we, you know, it was like no real contracts and, you know, hair and makeup was constantly leaving. And it was, it was, uh, it was like being in community theater again, you know, it was kind of like all hands on deck. We're going to get this done. Um, and it was great. And I think more actors need to have those experiences because that really tests your dedication to what you want to do. Cause, when you're on set on the 16th hour and they haven't gotten to your scene yet, you know, of course it's frustrating, and I've been there, and I've, you know, definitely been humbled before. But um, you need to have that in the back of your mind, like that you're not, you know, the money the money doesn't hurt, but that's not that's not really why you're there. Well, sometimes right. it might be why you're there. Depends on the show. Um, <laughs> so. Well, if you had a choice right now, what show would you want to be on? Oh, my God, that's such a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I personally gravitate to comedy more. I I love it. Um, I love bringing laughter to people. I, I like kind of being more of a character actress, being maybe a little bit, um, a little bit over the top. I love the... Deep with Julia Louis Dreyfus is um, fantastic. Um, I love Modern Family. Um, Blackish is great. You know, there's a lot. I ha- I can't say like I've watched them all. I love the comedians with Billy Crystal and Josh Gad. Um, I haven't watched what is it? Um, buckets or blankets? Whatever. Um, uh, gosh, I can't think of his name right now. Um, or, uh, we're talking about baskets. Baskets, yes, baskets. I haven't With watched that Zach yet. Zach Galifianakis. Yes, Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Um, uh, I was a, I was a fan of New Girl. I'm actually going in for an audition for the Mindy Project tomorrow. Um, oh, nice. 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I love comedy. I love doing comedy. But I actually probably watch more drama than I watch comedy. Like, I, I'm, I'm definitely, I love the Americans. I love American Horror Story. I'm a Homeland fan. I'm a Game of Thrones nerd. Um, so it's, it's funny. I prefer doing comedy, but I probably enjoy watching drama more. <laughs> now, how about, like, I mean, the big craze, uh, and, and we're all right here, uh, all of us are very guilty big fans of all these shows, is all the, the superhero shows. How about, how, how about get, you have to get, like, on a superhero show. You know, I, I'd love to be a badass. I really would. I You know, I'd love to, like, work with some kind of martial arts coordinator and just get so cut up and ripped and feel like I could protect myself in, you know, the worst neighborhood. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if that's me though. You know, I think I, I, I'd love to try it. And, you know, I think that's one of like the fantasies that I have being part of like a sci-fi or supernatural kind of, um, superhero thing. I don't know if I'm tall enough (laughs) or if I'll ever be thin enough. Um, so, you know, who knows? I, I would never stub my nose at anything um, because even if I'm not necessarily right for the part, it doesn't mean I can't learn something from it. So, sure. Um, but I'm definitely kind of like, the, I think more like the quirky best friend. Well, my my type, what I normally go in for is like, you know, quirky best friend or girl next door, you know. I'm not going in for like the drug user like super thin heroin addicts like that's not right. that's definitely not on my resume um they're like she's athletic and likes pasta so <laughs> that's <more interesting. laughs> oh that's funny now the mindy project that's on uh that's on, on hulu, hulu now. now yeah I, no, I, I, and I think, sure it went, yeah and, and that's sure that's no, another thing that's that really stuff. It is Hulu. I just I just double checked, yeah. but th- okay. them and Netflix. I mean, that's definitely the future oh as God. well as the web for original programming. Oh, yeah, absolutely! I just binge watched uh, The Man in the High Castle on Netflix, which is fantastic. Uh, again, another very dramatic show. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's so great. And Amazon Prime, you know, like being able to like you know stream stream stuff from that. Um, I, I, they are, they are conquering television right now. Yeah, um, Amazon time. and Hulu and Netflix and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure some of the networks are a little bit, a little bit worried. Oh, I and think I just so, wonder yeah. where, where are commercials going to go? Like where, you know, where's the advertising going to go? You know, because you don't see it on Netflix. You know, you just. Go to the next episode. Are you still watching? Yes, I'm still watching. You know, and then you move on. So, right, mm-hmm. and I, and I think I think it's Hulu. They have the option that you can pay a couple extra dollars more a month, and you don't get no commercials. Right, right. It's like a premium subscription, which everybody right. would would rather pay a couple dollars extra a month. You know, um, except during the Super Bowl, that's the only time people don't skip through commercials usually. So. And you know what? They ruined that whole thing, too, because uh, by the time the Super Bowl airs, they've already shown all the commercials on uh, on the oh. online. Right, right. I know. That's a, you know, that's another that's another reason, like, the Oscars are, are truly being aired at 5 o'clock in L.A. because, you know, we uh, social media just kind of ruins everything. Not intentionally, but it's just people sharing information and, you know, like we we've, we've seen everything. We know the score. We know this, and so it's um everything's at your fingertips these days, and uh, absolutely it has has worn on our ability to practice patience as a society. Um, and uh, maybe you know, just like taking a breather and not being so flooded with information constantly, so flooded with games and movies, and it's just like. I don't know, it's like the, it's, it's crazy, you know, it's it's, uh, it's a lot coming at you at once, and when, you know, I was a kid, it was like, go outside and play, and don't come back, so I 
tell you it's time for dinner. You're like, okay, see you. <laughs> you know, like, and now it's like, turn off the television, turn off your computer, turn off your phone, turn off your iPod, turn off your iPad. You know, it's like, holy shenanigans. So a lot, a lot of stuff that parents have to deal with these days, and kids too. Yeah, it, it, it's very overwhelming. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I, I, I told um, my friends, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm truly probably going to be the worst mother because my children are going to get a beeper. They're getting a pager, and then they'll get a flip phone. But there's no need for an <laughs> iPhone and all the, all these bells and whistles until you're actually going somewhere, until you can drive somewhere. I mean, I remember I had a pager. It was blue. I remember it vividly. And then I remember getting a car phone that was literally a car phone when I started driving. And that was it. That's all I got. I mean, you had to remember all your friends' phone numbers and, you know, have the, the courage to be like, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, is Jenny home? Is Caitlin? And they're like, yeah, yeah, hold on. Yeah, not, the good old days. The I know the good old days. Although there are good days now, I guess. <laughs> there is. There's definitely good no, days. No, there now. are. There are. There's a lot of wonderful things in, in medicine and science and technology and um, in the arts and architecture. There's, there's a lot of wonderful things to be proud of. Um, I just think I'm. I'm yearning for Pleasantville. I'm yearning for um, a sense of community that's not on Facebook. <laughs> Which I don't. Th- you're not on Facebook, correct? I am, but I'm. I that's there's right, a fan page um, that I did not start. But someone else started, so I don't really keep up with it. I, I am on Facebook. You know, privately for um, right. you know, my okay. friends are in Ohio, so I could see baby pictures and you know all that kind of good stuff. But um, I'm just recently now trying to post more, you know, on Twitter and on Instagram, and you know, trying trying to get out, trying to get out there more because you know that's become part of my job, part of my business. So right. I kind of have to suck it, up, suck it up and do it. <laughs> And I'm so now, appreciative of all the fans that I have. So I mean, I want I want to be able to give them something, but at the same time, there has to be some kind of boundaries of private and professional life. I think. Does it? They, no, it's got to be weird too. Like, um, with the whole social media thing, where you start to have like so many people start reaching out to you. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not too bad yet for me. Um, you know, I, I actually, there was a girl that um, asked me if I could do, donate anything, like any DVDs um, of her Dixie Lou, uh, this Alzheimer's um, foundation. And my grandmother actually died from Alzheimer's um, four years ago. And so I sent out, you know, a dress from the show and some, like, posters and stuff. So, like, in that way, I'm so grateful for social media to, like, allow me to give back and do stuff, which is, I mean, that's very little when it comes to giving back, you know, to a couple posters and a dress, but at least it helps me, like, still feel, like, kind of grounded and connected and and doing stuff. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, there are some, like, weird posts. It's like, hey, you're cute. You want to go out sometime? Like, you're my future wife. And you're like, oh, okay, maybe we should block that person. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sure you get that a lot. I'm sure there's some definitely uh, some freakazoids out there. I try, I try to take everything as a compliment. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Now, I, now I guess the the, the big, real big thing uh, of your career has been the show Heart of Dixie. Yes, yes. Um, I did, you know, some minor stuff before. I did my first. Um, thing that I uh, ever did on television was Cold Case, and um, it was, uh, the episode was called WASP, um, Women Air Force Special Pilots, so I got to, you know, kind of be in that 40s, 40s look, and we actually got to go to the Chino Air Force Museum and shoot some stuff there with some actual, like, B-52 bombers, and it was like, oh my gosh, I have arrived, this is Hollywood. Um, it was really amazing, um, the episode that I was a, a part of. And the the best part was when Warner Brothers sent me my check 
they accidentally made it out to my character's name, which was Betty Jo. And so I got to take my first check and frame it because they had to send me another one. Um, <laughs> so that was, that was a really great way to, like, enter um, Hollywood. And I've been on Warner Brothers so much. That's where, that's where Heart of Dixie was. So um, I kind of feel like Warner Brothers is a, is a little bit of a home for me. Now, you, I guess you started on there. You didn't actually become like a series series um, regular on there until the third season. Yes, the third. I started the co star um, the first season. I was actually only supposed to do two episodes, and I oh, wow. weaseled in a couple of zingers here and there, and um, just you know, I enjoyed myself, and I think it showed. And so I can't remember how many episodes I did the first season, but then the second season they bumped me up to guest star. Um, and then that season, I actually auditioned for a pilot um, with the same guys that are doing Always Sunny in Philadelphia called Living Lotus oh. for Fox. And I got the pilot, and it ended up not being picked up and not going. And I think Heart of Dixie was like, hmm, I think we want to keep AB around. And so they offered me a, a regular on the show. And so then season three and four, I was I was as good as gold. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Nick. So, so I, I know, Bay, you know, you don't watch some of the same shows that I do, but this show was sort of like, um, you remember the Michael J. Fox movie, Doc Hollywood? Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's been ages, but yeah. Right. So it was kind of like, you know, a fish out of water. And I think those, it doesn't surprise me at all that they wanted you to come back because, you you did something special with that character where, you know, people might have tuned in because, you know, Jamie King was in it or, or you know, because, of, you know, the cast that was coming in. But that character really, it was it was one that always made people smile, in my opinion. It was, yeah. there was always something fun. There was always something. And by the end of the third season, I think more people cared about, your storyline with, you know, LeVon and, and all that than anything else. I, I It totally <laughs> transcended the rest of the show. I was actually kind of disappointed that they, there was never talk of a spinoff or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, Scott Porter and I, we were really, we were ready. I was, I was ready. I was like, Nashville Knights or Tennessee Knights because it can't be called Nashville. I was like, I got the title. Scott and I are ready. Um, <laughs> Tucker, A.B., like, life, you know, in the in the musical sense, uh, which God and I were sure hoping so. But, um, yeah, it just, you know, it didn't happen. The CW has done some really great programming. They've um, won, uh, you know, Emmys and Golden Globes now for Jane the Virgin and for My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. And, so, and, and they have a lot of superhero shows. Um, but we were definitely bummed, you know, our... I feel like season four, our numbers stayed the same, and we have such a loyal fan base, such a great, you know, just group, not only in the United States, but Brazil, London, France, um, South Africa, Australia. I mean, we uh, we have a, a lot of lovers of Dixie, and um, they were definitely just as disappointed as we were. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I can totally understand. I was a huge fan of the show, and I just, I couldn't believe it wasn't coming back. It was. Uh, I'm thinking right now, I might even like a web, a web series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were we were hoping that maybe Netflix would even pick it up because Netflix has Dixie on there already. You know, season one, two, three, and four now. Um, so we were maybe hoping that they were going to, you know, and who knows, you never know. I mean, there are still fans that are sending out petitions that I see on, on Twitter, which is just, um, it's so amazing. And it just, it <laughs> makes my heart sore. Like, I just, I love it. And I love that. I mean, that's part of my job. That's why I do what I do, you know, to affect somebody's life. And it was just, it was a good-natured show. It was, you know, that show that you could sit and watch with your family with a bucket of popcorn, and, you know, it wasn't it wasn't too crazy to follow, and you got some laughs, and you got some tears, and it was, you know, it was just, it was easy. It was an easy show to hang out with. Absolutely, and it, it had a great cast, too. I mean, there were some Gilmore Girl regulars. 
Um, of course, mm-hmm. Reginald mm-hmm. L. Johnson, Crest was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it just had a really amazing, amazing cast. The supporting cast yeah. was uh, just as good, if not better, than the main cast. Yeah, I, and we just we had amazing people. We had such amazing people, and and it just showed like that the Blue Bell really was a home for us, as as you could see, because we had so many supporting cast members that were basically like regulars. They might not have had a contract, but they were basically in every show because we kind of, I know we all grew to love each other so much. Um, and our showrunner um, and our writers and, well, you know, it was our little home on the Warner Brothers lot. And we just, we embraced it and we had a great, great time. I'm so thankful um, for how it worked out for me especially. I mean, I just, I'm so lucky and fortunate. Um, and, you know, I, ho- I hope that happens again, but I don't know if there will ever be that kind of a feeling and camaraderie um, that, that I shared with those people for four years. Oh, wow, that's now, how, amazing. How, how tough was that, to, like, when you get that? I mean, because this, this was your first real series where you're yeah. a series regular on air. So when you get that news, I mean, it's got to be devastating. Well, we kind of knew going into season four that this is probably going to be it for us. Um, Just the way things were kind of moving. You know, our numbers weren't super high, but they weren't super low. Um, So we had planned for it. You know, that's that's why we had the season or series finale that we did. Um, So I think we all had, like, ample time to kind of prepare and, you know, hang out, say goodbye. And then we all actually went over to Scott Porter's house on the night that the actual um, series finale aired, and we all got together, and um, it was great, you know. And I, I, I still keep in touch with people, you know, mainly via text because everybody's busy. Everybody's pregnant or ha- and has a baby except for me, so I got I got to get on that apparently to join the, join the clan. Um <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely sad. Uh, but I, but at the same time, you know, like four years with one character is amazing and it's great. And there's, you know, there was a part of me that was ready to try something different and, and you know, move on to something else. But I absolutely miss AB. I, you know, I miss playing her and I miss, I miss doing the show. But I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully a really, Good and fruitful 2016. Now, now, how about that with with playing that character? You know, I, I went through mm-hmm. some clips today on YouTube, and um, the, the character has that southern twang, and, and I was just right. thinking to myself because I know where like uh, I'll start imitating a, a, a character or a person, and you start doing <laughs> that voice so much that you just yeah. continually do it. How many times did you catch yourself doing it off camera, and you're like? Got to snap yourself out of it. <laughs> you know what? Not as much as I would think. The the worst though is sometimes when I would be like just finishing a scene and my phone would ring or I'd have to call somebody and be like, "Hey, yo, how you doing?" And I'm like, "Oh God, okay, no, nope, no, nope. dial it back, Caitlin." Um, you know, a couple a couple times friends have called and they're like, "Are is this Caitlin?" So, um, but yeah, it, it was it's um. The worst is now that I'm not on the show, and if I talk to somebody who has a southern accent, I immediately go into it, and I feel <laughs> like I have to give like a preparatory speech to be like, I'm not mocking you, I'm not trying to be like you. I was just kind of like you for four years, and uh, you know, you sound you sound like home, and I just want to imitate you. Um, so that's that's the worst. When like when it's like, oh my god, I love your show. I'm like, oh my god, thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm like, oh Jesus. So that's funny. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, you said you're you're going for a for the Mindy show. Anything else you got uh, you're working on or just you know just back to the audition game. You know, unfortunately, 2015 was was not the best year for me. Um, but you know, I, that's, that's the life of an actor or an actress, you know, it's, it's the, when it's good, it's great. And when it's okay, it's terrible. Um, right. so, you know, last year just wasn't, wasn't my year. Um, and pilot season will start up, even though 
pilot season has become less of the thing that you hear about or seeing quotations. I mean, pilots are casting kind of year round, but there's still a big push come February. So, sure. Um, hopefully, I can I can snag another series and um, get back on TV. Not that I'm against movies or anything, but um, I don't know. I've, I've kind of always like wanted my own sitcom or some kind of single cam comedy is where um, I just feel like the most comfortable I think Uh, but and I also am like okay I'm 32 thinking about you know settling down starting a family and you know going off to different countries to shoot a movie is maybe not as much in my playbook as it used to be but hey Steven Spielberg or you know whoever if you need me, call me. I'll come. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll change my plans. <laughs> now, you, you've mentioned quite a few times that you'd really like to do a sitcom. What about mm-hmm. uh, the movie world? Would you prefer to be doing movies, feature films, or staying on the small screen? Probably small screen. I mean, that's. Uh, I like that... Um, kind of having a home there, you know, if it's a sitcom or a single cam comedy that works, you know, you're, the crew becomes your family, you know, you get the makeup trailer is like your home. Um, and it's just nice. And you get to build a relationship with these people and build a relationship with your character over so many years. Um, and I, I mean, again, nothing against movies by any means. I mean, they're fantastic and I would jump at the chance. But mainly my focus has always been towards TV. I, you know, I love going to the movie theater, but I was usually so busy with dance or with school that TV was usually probably more of an outlet than going to the movies. So I think, you know, maybe that has a little bit of an influence. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think we made it through. I think we did. Yes. <laughs> I, well, it says six fifty nine for me. It's nine fifty nine for you. Yeah. Look at that. See. Easy peasy. How about that? Absolutely. <laughs> so, all right. So we got to get you, uh, your social media out there so everybody can find you and track you down and be polite and nice and uh, not get blocked. <laughs> or not, you know, be who you are. Uh, you do you. Um, my uh, Twitter and my Instagram is. Caitlin underscore black 29, and that's K-A-I-T-L-Y-N underscore black 29. And I'll do my best to keep up with it. I'm not the greatest at it, but I'm trying. Now i got to ask, what's the 29 for? Um, The 29 is my birthday. Uh, July 29th is my birthday, and um, I just kind of threw the 29 in there for good luck. There you go. Very nice. Cool. Cool. Well, well thanks for great, having Caitlin. me. This is such a pleasure. Absolutely. And before I let you go, too, can you cut me an ID? This is Caitlin Black, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio? Sure, I sure can. This is Caitlin Black, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Awesome. Caitlin, thank you so much. And, hey, uh, we'll be in touch, and you'll be in touch, and uh, we hope uh, you'll be calling back to tell us that you're on the Mindy Project. That would be wonderful. Maybe you guys are my good luck charm. I hope so. (laughs) All right. Well, you guys stay bundled up, and thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care. All right. Take care, guys. All right. There she goes. Miss Caitlin Black, future star of the Mindy Project. (laughs) That would be Uh, awesome if she gets it. I hope she does. I, I, you know, I was saying in a private chat, like, uh, she was talking about that episode she did where it was in the 40s, and I, that, and that's what I was trying to say, man, like, that would be perfect for, like, Agent Carter. Yeah, dude, I, I mean, l- like I said, like, I, I didn't know nothing about her, and I sat down, like, Thursdays is my day to sit and, like, do my interview stuff and all, so I was sitting there this afternoon, and I was going through stuff of her, and... I was getting, like, the total same exact vibe, like, from pictures I was coming across and uh, clips on YouTube I was coming across. I was saying to myself the same exact thing, like, she could totally be, like, in an Agent Carter-type show. 
Yep, because there's there's something about it, just that like sort of classic, sort of old school look. Yep, absolutely. Very cool, very cool interview. Made my week. Cool. Happy we were <laughs> able to do that for you. <laughs> 